Today we're going to demonstrate a few features of Google in the new Chrome browser that raise consumer privacy concerns. The first feature is Google's Suggestion Tool. This feature is used on the Google website as well as throughout its applications such as Gmail, Google Docs, and the Google Toolbar. After I type a few letters of my search, but before I click the Google search button, Google proactively looks up my search based on the first few letters. This is a very convenient feature, but it raises a concern too. From the moment I type those first few letters, Google is already tracking, uploading, and storing my keystrokes. Let's see how it works. What you're looking at here is the Google homepage in the new Chrome browser. However, this issue is not specific to Chrome as the feature works on all browsers the same way. And on the lower part of the screen, you're looking at a tool used by computer network professionals called the Packet Sniffer. We'll use this Packet Sniffer to see what information Chrome is sending back to Google and when. Google has changed the typical request response pattern of the web with a little piece of JavaScript code that says every time the user types a letter, send it to me. In this case, I'm going to type the first few letters of the word marijuana. Watch what happens over the network. As you can see, each letter gets sent to Google until it can tell I probably want the word marijuana. Now I'm a fairly private person, so before I click the submit button, I think to myself, hey, looking around the internet for illegal drugs from my home computer is probably not too smart. So I never click the Google search button and click the backspace button a bunch of times. The problem is it's too late. Google already has the information. I didn't know this was happening. I didn't intend to give this information. I didn't click anything. It could be worse. What if I type something more serious, like this? And it's not just Google that can see this information. Anyone with a packet sniffer between me and Google can see that I type this. This means that if I'm surfing the internet from work, my company can see this. If I'm surfing from a wireless connection at Starbucks, Starbucks can see this. My ISP can see it. and. If my government is watching, not just me specifically, but any part of the internet between me and Google, they can see it too. To make matters worse, Google has stored this information on their computers. So if someone with a warrant demands this information, they can see this information as well. For all features like this, I should be able to turn them on and off with the single click of a button. I'd also like to see more transparency around features that passively acquire information about me. I understand that if I buy something at Walmart, they're going to have a record of that transaction. But I'm very uncomfortable with the idea that a store might use their video cameras to record every item I picked up and put down. It's just too easy to make assumptions and draw conclusions about why I did what I did. Now you might say that none of this matters since it's all anonymous. I mean, it's not like they know who I am or where I live, but that's not quite true. There are publicly available databases that map IP addresses to longitude and latitude coordinates with surprising accuracy. Let's see how they work. So now I'm going to open up a simple browser, again Chrome, and I'm going to go to a website called what is my IP, www.whatismyip.com, and that's going to show me what my public facing IP address is. This is what the internet sees um, as my address. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go to one of these geo IP databases. There are many of them on the internet and I'm going to pick one. In this case I'm going to go to a website. It's publicly available. It's completely free. And it's called MaxMind. Again, there are many of them and there's nothing, nothing particularly special about this one. And I'm going to click get my location. This GeoIP database is going to go, it's going to look at my IP address and it's going to give me an approximate latitude and longitude. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to head on over to Google Maps and I'm going to paste that longitude and latitude address, click the submit button and sure enough my IP address puts me in the Mission District of San Francisco, California surprisingly close to where I actually live. I don't actually live at 16th and Harlow Street, however I know exactly where that is and I can walk to it from the here. Next, let's take a look at Chrome's new incognito mode. To be fair, Chrome's incognito mode gets a lot of things right, but there are some important oversights that need to be corrected if Chrome is serious about protecting my privacy. Again, let's look under the hood and see what's happening. So let's go ahead and open a new incognito window. Here you can see that we're in incognito mode with a new icon and a different color. I'm going to go ahead and enter a new URL. In this case, instead of entering eBay's address, I'm going to have a typo. E-E-B-A-Y. You can see that the browser is having trouble finding it. And in a couple of seconds, you'll see 
that the browser comes back with a suggestion. Instead of eBay with an E, it says, maybe what you really want is eBay, eBay.com, the correct address. Where did it get that information? Well, it went back to the mothership and asked Google for a correction. And you can see that using the sniffer that we used earlier. Next, I'm going to show you a problem with a new feature in Chrome called Application Shortcuts. In this case, I'm going to go to a questionable website called High Times. This is a website about smoking marijuana, to continue the example. We're still in incognito mode, and I'd expect to stay in incognito mode. However, when I go over here and create application, a new application shortcut and put that on my desktop, it'll create a link on my desktop that should jump me back to this page whenever I want. I'm going to go ahead, close the browser, and you can see the shortcut on my browser. When I go ahead and double click on that shortcut, what comes up? Well, the web page that I requested, but it doesn't come up in incognito mode. A third example we'll look at is tricky. Like a lot of websites, High Times is a paying customer of Google and uses Google Analytics to log visits. They do this by placing a snippet of JavaScript code on the High Times website that phones home to Google, and Google records the visit. Before Chrome, there really wasn't much anyone could say about this. Google was acting simply as a vendor to the website. Chrome changes this. Now Google is both the sender and the recipient of the information. They are in complete control of the entire communication at both endpoints, and yet, ostensibly, I am incognito. From Google's point of view, nothing could be further from the truth. To learn more about privacy and to ask Google to protect your privacy, please go to www.consumerwatchdog.org Google and send Google a message using our free online form.